Good afternoon and welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral for this investiture mass. As we begin our liturgy, we invite you to rise and to join in singing the entrance hymn printed in your program, All Creatures of Our God and King.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. You are all very much at home here at St. Patrick's Cathedral, America's Parish Church. You know that. One of the, one of the groups that has a cherished place in our history and heritage here would be the uh, Ardor of Malta. So we're grateful for your, your company today. Thanks be to God. It's a beautifully impressive group. One of the, uh, when I was walking in, one of the little kids in the back says, oh, is this that Macy's Day Parade? I, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm especially grateful for the company of brother bishops and priests and deacons, the distinguished leadership of our beloved Ardor. Uh, in a special way, um, I know you share in my joy in welcoming the Latin Rite Patriarch of Jerusalem, the successor of St. James the Apostle, Archbishop Pierre Battista Pizzaballa. <laughs> We're glad you're here, and he's deeply appreciative of the work of the Knights in the soil made holy by the very feet of Jesus. And uh, Archbishop Boris Gutsiak, who's the Ukrainian Catholic Bishop, Archbishop here in the United States, how grateful he is. And I saw firsthand the marvelous work of the Sovereign Ardor in Ukraine. Welcome, Archbishop Gutsiak. <laughs> and Ar Archbishop Katya, we're always grateful for you. You remind us of the presence of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Uh, in your work as his representative, his nuncio at the United Nations. So we're glad you're with us as well. Uh, my brother bishop's leadership, Fra John, thank you, and Dr. Kelly, thanks for your, for your leadership. And to our new members, alleluia, it's great to have you. To our old members, glad you're back. And let us pray the greatest prayer of all, this holy sacrifice of the Mass and that we might do it the more worthily, we call to mind our sins and ask for the mercy that flows from the hill of Calvary. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Defend your church, O Lord, by the protection of the holy apostles Peter and Paul, that as she received from them the beginnings of her knowledge of things divine, so through them she may receive, even to the end of the world, an increase in heavenly grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After three months, we set sail on a ship that had wintered at the island of Malta. It was an Alexandrian ship with the Dioscuri as its figurehead. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there three days. And from there, we, sound, we sailed around the coast and arrived at Regium. After a day, a south wind came up, and in two days, we reached Puteoli. There we found some brothers and were urged to stay with them for seven days. And thus we came to Rome. The brothers from there heard about us and came as far as the Forum of Apius and the three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul gave thanks to God and took courage. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. He remained there for two full years in his lodgings. He received all who came to him 
and with complete assurance and without hindrance, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. company of apostles praise you.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side, where he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came forward to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them. He said, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. Peter got out of the boat, began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And after they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, (coughs) Truly, you are the Son of God, (coughs) the Gospel of the Lord. First of all, I'm grateful to His Eminence, Cardinal Dolan, for inviting me for these celebrations. Uh, I greet all the bishops, especially Cardinal, uh, His Excellency, uh, the Apostolic Nuncio, not yet Cardinal Caccia, and all these gathering, the acting Grand Master of the Knights of Malta, and all of you. Um, For the believers, uh, everything is providence. I think it's it's providence that the Patriarch of Jerusalem, the Bishop of Jerusalem, is present here for this celebration of the Knights of Malta because in your identity, in your history as Knights of Malta, Jerusalem is a a very relevant place. One of the titles of the Grand Master is the King of Jerusalem. It's better not to say this aloud. Someone can suspect something. But anyway, Jerusalem and the Holy Land is part of your history and identity and find it provident, providential that today uh, we are here all together, the Church of Jerusalem that I represent and uh, your request and order. First of all, before talking about this event, we have to talk something about the gospel that we, we have chosen. The gospel is very interesting. We are immediately after the uh, successful moment of multiplication of love and fish, 
very successful. Everyone wants to make Jesus uh, king because uh, they saw how wonderful he is, but he escaped immediately because he's not his king, but not according to their standards, of course. And then he goes on the mountain. He wants to pray in intimacy with God in the prayer. The, in the Gospel of Matthew, only in two moments, Jesus prays in the Gospel of today and in Gethsemane. So it means two important moments of the revelation. Then uh, Jesus uh, made the disciples get into the boat and want them to go to the other side. So we have this important passage, we have the sea. In the biblical tradition, especially in the book of Revelation, but in the biblical tradition, sea is the place of evil. The place of where the life, the evil, the difficulties is. Then we have the disciples in the boat, and not just the disciples, we have the fear of the disciples. They are scared, and, and the scare made them to become blind. They don't, do not recognize him. He's a ghost. He's not Jesus. He's not the Lord, and so on. So we have, uh, and we have Jesus walking on the sea. All these elements are very important. First of all, Jesus made the disciples to get into the boat. I mean, doesn't let them to remain there uh, where they had this successful event of the multi multiplication of love. Go into the seed, go into the life, the real life, where there are difficulties, where there are storms, there is a wind against you, uh, where are a lot of uh, difficulties. And so go the other side. Then we see Jesus walking on the sea. It's important, this passage. He presented Jesus as the Lord, as Kyrios. The one is, he walks on the sea, means he's, um, he's dominating the evil. Evil cannot prevail on him. He's stronger. And uh, what the disciples didn't understand yet because, because, because of their fear and so on. Then, then we have the fear of the disciples in the midst of the difficulties and their moment. And the, and the prayer of, and also what Jesus says, it is I, don't be afraid. And at the end, of course, the, the prayer of uh, Peter, Jesus, save me, not just rescue me, save me. It's uh, different. So what does it say uh, to all of us? First of all, we are like the disciples. In the, in the boat of disciples, we can see the church, we can see the community, we can see our families, we can see our, li our life as it is. In, in, in our life as it is, we have difficulties, we have struggles, evil, evil, we don't like to talk about it, but there is, evil exists. The divider, um, I coming from a land where uh, we are called to be united, but everything talks about division, political division, religious division, and so on. So, and this is part of our life, unfortunately. So, but, so we have to go. And Jesus, sometimes it's easier for us to remain at the harbor, not to leave. It's much more secure. Uh, you remain there. You don't take any risk. It's secure. But Jesus said, go to the other side. Enter into the life. Enter into the life of the world, which is risky, is a lot of, uh, lot of dangers, everything. But you have to go there. But with the faith. Don't forget that it is I. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I can walk on the sea. I mean, I am above all the evil, above everything. Can, they can touch my life, the life of the cardinal, your life, but the evil cannot prevail on the kingdom of God, who is always growing. So it is very encouraging, this, this passage. And this is what we need. And, but we also, we always we need to remind to ourselves and to say always, Lord, save me. We cannot save ourselves by ourselves. So what does it say? Why? I would like to know why you choose this passage of the gospel. But what, 
what, what the connection is, uh, I see it at least. First of all, for all of us, is, I'm, I'm thinking now as pastor in my church, uh, the Church of Jerusalem, you know, it is known as the Church of Status Quo, to leave things as they are. Sometimes also in our institutions, maybe also in a in new order, leave the things as they are, don't take risk. But Jesus reminds us, go to the other side. Don't remain at the arbor. We have departure, we have to go. Always we have to go. First. Second, be aware anyway that whatever we do is not just ourselves. Sometimes I see uh, our communication office talks about, presented, what we do. We have our schools, we teach, uh, we, uh, we have hospitals, we have this, we have those, and so on and so on. It seems that we are saving the world. Gee, Lord, save me. Lord is the Savior. It is not I. It is not you. It is the Lord with us. Never without us, but first of all, is the Lord. And whatever we do is because of Him. If you meet Jesus, you are in love with men. N not necessarily the opposite. Through Jesus, you arrive the men, to the men, to the needs, to the poor. Because to loving Jesus means also to love. Uh, every man, everyone, because we are an image of Jesus. Not necessarily the opposite. So whatever you do is not, the philanthropy doesn't bring you to Jesus necessarily, but Jesus bring, forces you to become in love of men, always. So what you do is not philanthropy, is expression of your love for Jesus, first of all. And this should be very clear, very aware in all what you do. You, you arrive not just to the Christians. You arrive to, I, I see uh, you have a very beautiful presence in Bethlehem, the Holy Family Hospital, that is uh, mainly your responsibility. And 99% of them are, are non-Christians. Uh, it is wonderful. And this is all over the world, of course, is wonderful. But but it's because of Jesus. And Jesus, with Jesus, there are no barriers, no misunderstandings. You can arrive everywhere, to every man as it is, without asking, without, without pretending. Freedom, gratuitousness. So, and uh, this is, and to be aware that what, what we are doing is, a, is part of the project of God is not our project. He is the Savior. He is saving. We are part of this big project of, of the Lord who wants to arrive to every man, to every woman all over the world and bring his consolation, his presence and his word uh, of, of, uh, of love. So the Nice of Malta, we have presence, presence everywhere. We are very famous, we are very strong, we have a lot of, we have diplomatic representations, you, and uh, you are impressive, you are impressive, really, everywhere. But don't forget that we are part of a project of the Lord, not of your project. All what you are doing, uh, and the only concern, the only fear which is admitted in the church is to ask ourselves if, if what, what we are doing is according to the will of God or not. This is the only concern permitted. Because if the Lord with us, we shouldn't be afraid. It is I, don't be afraid, take courage. Take courage, not just don't be afraid. Take courage, go. In, initiate, do things, take courage. And don't be afraid because it is I. Not it is Pierre Battista, not it is Timothy, or it is whoever it will be. It is I, Jesus, the Lord, the curious, who can walk on sea, prevail on evil, and no one can prevail on him. If, if we are with him, 
no one can prevail on us. So my congratulations to all of you. And as we say always in Jerusalem, next year in Jerusalem. Thank you. the honor to announce and proclaim that His Excellency Fra John Dunlop, the Lieutenant of the Grand Master of the Sovereign Military Hospitaller Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes, and of Malta, and the Sovereign Council have approved the proposals for membership in the order of those assembled here today to be invested. Your Eminence, we request that the insignia of the order be conferred upon these new members now to be blessed. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. O Lord, hear my prayer. The Lord be with you. God our Father, through the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, the cross has become for us a sign of life. Pour down your blessing upon these crosses, which you have created. May those who wear them be blessed. Let them learn that the yoke of the Lord is not oppressive. His burden is light. Let these crosses ever be a reminder of our faith and inspiration of good works a help to salvation, a comfort, and a protection against evil. <clears throat> With the following candidates for conventional chaplains, please come forward. The Most Reverend John S. Punici, the Most Reverend William D. Byrne in absentia, the Most Reverend Paul Sanchez in absentia, and the Most Reverend Edmund Whalen. Your Excellencies, please state your desire. of Rose and of Malta. Do you promise to be faithful to the noble traditions of the order, to participate in its services, to have a special care for the poor and sick, and to nurture the spiritual lives of the members of the order as a conventual chaplain? I do so promise. I am most pleased to welcome you to this ancient hospitaller order of charity and chivalry and will now present you with the cross of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta as a symbol of your promise that you have just made. Would the following candidates for magistral chaplain please come forward? The Very Reverend Brian Keeley, the Very Reverend Enrique Salvo, Fathers, please state your desire. I, I Brian Kiley, desire, desire to be received as a magistral chaplain into, into the sovereign, sovereign military hospital or order of St. John, John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes, Rhodes, and of Malta. Do you promise to be faithful to the noble traditions of the order, to participate in its services, to have special care for the poor and the sick, 
and to nurture the spiritual lives of the members of the order as a magistral chaplain. I do, I do so, so promise. promise. I am most pleased to welcome you to this ancient Hospitaller Order of Charity and Chivalry, and will now present you with the cross of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta as a symbol of the promise you have just made. Each of the following candidates of Magistral Grace to be invested should stand in place and remain standing when your name is called. Dames of Magistral Grace, Sarah Virginia Ackerson, Ellen D. Acosta, Cynthia M. Anthony, Angela S. Berger, Kelly L. Frank, Anne George Poscar, Shannon B. Getz, Nancy K. Gruber, Phyllis C. Heck, Patricia R. Hellman, Patricia Barahickey, Carolyn S. Kerr, Gina LaRocca, Rita Lazaro, Stephanie Tui Lee, Victoire Anne Marie Lillier de la Favre Duche, Jessica D. Lillimon, Alexandra V. Lippis, <coughs> Melissa M. Madden, Kathleen J. Mastrangelo, Susan A. Michael, Rosalinda M. Moritz, Denise Marie Neiman, Denise A. Richards, Daniela C. Rogala, Paula J. Sarde Pegnata, Lisa Schofield, Andrea P. Smith, Ann M. Spiak, Valerie A. Vilsant, <coughs> Lisa M. Stolpnagel, Knights of Magistral Grace, Roberto J. Acosta, Joaquin Alarcon, John Anthony, William Bergner, Joseph R. Bully, Gregory S. Brown, Patrick M. Corrigan, Arthur C. de Garidal Theron, Daniel Doval Blanco, G. Bjorn Fuentes de la Cruz, Peter B. Frank, Jr., Timothy W. Gama, John S. Getz, Jesse T. Green, James H. Greenwood, Robert W. Hostoffer, Piotr Jankowski, Michael John Kelly, Brian G. Kerr, Jonathan C. Klimple, Lawrence J. Koster, Richard J. Lazara, Alexander S. Larynchis, Andrew G. Love, 
Gregory A. Madden, Richard E. Malinkowski, <coughs> Joseph F. McGovern, Justin Gilles Joseph Morin Carpenter, Leonard F. Moritz, Philip D. Muscat, Mark M. Noye Maingard, Bobby M. Olson, Randy P. Pegnata, Major General Fabrizio Peruli, John E. Puskar, Jr., Robert M. Rogawa, Vincent J. Sansone, Jr., Luigi Scarpelli, Barry Schofield, William Somerville, Joseph A. Spiak, Bert H. von Stolpenegel. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you desire? What you request is a grave and serious matter. You wish to become a member of our order, to achieve Christian perfection, and to practice the love of your neighbor. So let us first implore the mercy of God and the intercession of our patrons and all the saints. And we ask His Eminence Cardinal Dolan for a special blessing on those being invested today. Let us pray. O oh God, look graciously down upon those, these your servants, who wish to follow our Lord Jesus Christ in our ardor, instill your grace in their hearts and in our hearts. Let us not take false pride in our membership, but rather let us be humble in your service. Reception in our order, which you ask for, belongs only to those who commit themselves to follow the banner of Christ. So I ask you, are you ready to follow the banner of Christ and of the order, to witness and defend the Catholic faith, and to do works of charity as the order requires? We are most pleased to hear your promise of commitment. We accept you as our confreres amongst our number, as servants of our lords, the sick and the poor, and as witnesses of the faith and defenders of the church. We give you all the rights appropriate to your membership and rank in the sovereign order of Malta. We have given you the garment of our order. Wear it as the armor of God, and as the mark of being a member of our order, so that it may be for you the robe of salvation. With wisdom, you should look to the past, confront the present, and prepare yourselves for the future. With righteousness, you should deal with public and private matters. With strength, you should demonstrate at every opportunity a greatness of spirit. Hold yourself aloof from av avarice and a desire for wealth, lest you endanger your eternal possession of heaven. 
behold the cross and Christ our crucified Lord and King. For our sake he carried the cross and died on it to free us from the burden of sin and to gain for us life. Whoever wishes to belong to him and to serve him must take up his cross and follow him. Behold the sword, the symbol of the readiness of your predecessors in the chivalric order, even at the risk of their own lives, to defend the faith, protect widows, children, the helpless and the needy. What more do you desire? <coughs> Brothers and sisters, we give you this cross of the order, this sign of Christ's passion, of his love for all. Let us always inspire you with love of your neighbor. Cherish and defend the cross. Should it ever happen that in the battle for Christ and his church, you turn your back on the cross or desert it, then in accordance with the ancient custom of our order, this holy symbol must justly be taken from you and you must be expelled from our community. By the virtue of the power bestowed on me as Lieutenant of the Grand Master, I now invest you in the Sovereign Military Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes, and of Malta. Sensibus, in fundi amore. 
Let us pray. For the Holy Catholic Church, that our Lord and God may confirm and protect her, together with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, with all the bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, and with the holy people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prelate and the chaplains of our order, that they may be filled, like St. John the Baptist, with constancy, strength, and zeal, and therefore serve him faithfully and beyond reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the flourishing of our order, for His Excellency Fra John T. Dunlop, Lieutenant of the Grand Master, for its officers and members, and for the members of the Grand, the Alliance Orders of St. John, that our work may prosper for the glory of God, that no member may ever be forgetful of his or her obligations, and that more vocations will be given to our order. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who, in the name of the order, bring help to the afflicted and mercifully assist their brethren in sickness, hunger, poverty, and ignorance, that God may always enlighten them, protect them, console them in adversity, and grant that their works of charity may bear much fruit in his sight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> for those dames of the American Association, especially for those senior <coughs> dames who were the first to join the American Association, that their compassion, dedication, and tenacity may continue to inspire the members and affiliates of the American Association. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those members of the order and their families who are sick, the members of all the member, the families of all the members of the order, and our beloved Malads, that they may have God's special grace on their pilgrimage in life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased members of the order, especially those who have died during the past year, whose names are in our program, yes. that our patron, St. John the Baptist, may lead them into everlasting life to receive the reward of their service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask the powerful intercession of Mary, our mother, under her title, Our Lady of Philanimo, of St. John the Baptist and Blessed Fra Gerardo, as we make our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. As we bring you this offering of our service, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that the truth handed down to us by the ministry of the apostles Peter and Paul may endure undefiled in our hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, almighty and eternal God, for you, eternal Good Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. So with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, <clears throat> we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice in my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, all the bishops here present, and all the clergy. 
Remember our, also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. <coughs> Welcome <coughs> into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the, in the unity, unity of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and form the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, <coughs> that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May your people, we pray, O Lord, nourished by the very bread of heaven, rejoice in commemorating the apostles Peter and Paul, for it is through your gift that we are governed under their patronage through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing the hymn of the order printed in your program. The daily prayer of the order. Lord Jesus, thou hast seen fit to enlist me for thy service in the order of St. John of Jerusalem. I humbly entreat thee through the intercession of the Most Holy Virgin of Filermo, of St. John the Baptist, of Blessed Jared, and all the saints to keep me faithful to the traditions of our order. Be it mine to practice and defend the Catholic, the Apostolic, the Roman faith against sacrilege. Be it mine to practice charity toward my neighbors, especially the poor and the sick. Give me the strength I need to carry out this my resolve, forgetful of myself, learning ever from thy holy gospel a spirit of deep and generous Christian devotion, striving ever to promote God's glory, the world's peace, and all that may benefit the order of St. John of Jerusalem. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Through the intercession of Our Lady of Palermo, St. John the Baptist, Saints Peter and St. Paul, and Blessed Gerard, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita tu cielo, et ses nostra sale. A te clamamus, ex ore spirii ebe. A te suspiramus, gementes et ventes, imag lacrimarum vale. Oh.
Please join in singing our recessional hymn printed in your program, Now Thank We All Our God. 